Good morning, and welcome to Virtual Scripture First. My name is Valerie, and thank you so much for joining us this morning. Today is Sunday, March 14th. Go ahead and pull out your packet, and let's get started. To s- first, we're going to share your highs and your lows from this week with your family. So take a few minutes, go around in a circle, and share what you liked about this week and what you didn't like about this week. And then follow along on this piece of paper or in your Bible as Elias reads our lesson for this morning. Hello, our scripture first reading for today is John 3, 14 through 21. Uh, I hope you'll bear with me. Moses lifted up the snake in the desert. In the same way, the Son of Man must also be lifted up. Then everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, will have eternal life. God did not send his Son into the world to judge the world. He sent his Son to save the world through him. Anyone who believes in him is not judged, but already who does not believe is judged already. They have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Here is the judgment. Light has come into the world. For the people love darkness instead of the light. They love darkness because what they did was evil. Everyone who does evil deeds hates the light. They will not come into the light. They are afraid that what they do will be seen. But anyone who lives by the truth comes into the light. They live by the truth with God's help. They come into the light so that it will be easy to see their good deeds. Thanks for hanging out. Hello, kids. We just heard this great text that comes to us from the Gospel of John in chapter 3. Some of you may have recognized part of that uh, text as it was read to you. We know this text, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son. So the question that I have for you this morning, does God really love the whole world? Now think about that for just a minute. Does that mean that God loves mosquitoes, that he loves skunks, that he loves those things that uh, maybe creep us out a little bit, like maybe snakes or spiders or things like that? Well, of course, these are all things that God has created, that he has put into this world, uh, that he has given a purpose in this world. But this text that we hear today is a bigger promise than that. It is a much bigger promise than that because it tells us that God loves the whole world. Not just some of it, not just some people. Now, it's often easy for us to to think about this uh, God loving the world and kind of excluding others. You know, those people that maybe uh, we don't get along with very well. Uh, People that that we just don't like to be around very much. And and unfortunately, that is a truth. Uh, So... This promise comes to us again from John chapter 3, and it says God loves the whole world, and he provides for all creatures in his creation. Even those things that annoy us, like mosquitoes and uh, the smell of skunks and stuff like that. But even more so, that he provides all that is needed for life. That is life for all of the creatures of the earth and life for each of us as God's people on this earth. And that it isn't just a certain segment of people or a certain group of people or a certain kind of people or a certain uh, people that look some way. Um, God loves all people. God loves the whole world. It is all his creation. And for us, we go through our days each and every day struggling with this idea of what it means for God to love us. We want to know that God loves us, but we struggle to actually uh, trust that he loves us. And this text actually tells us how God loves us in that because of sin, because of the fact we don't always trust God and we don't always listen to God, that uh, that makes our relationship challenging. But God is the one that takes up the matter, even though we're the ones that are, are not acting right or not thinking right. He is the one that sends his son into the world and makes that right. He's the one who says, even though sin has 
uh, divided us, that sin causes us to have uh, a relationship that is challenging at times, I want that to be right. I want that to be perfectly right. And so he sent his son Jesus into the world to bring his love into the world and so that the world would know God in a whole different way. Prior to Jesus, the only way that people knew God was by God's anger. That when God got mad, he would allow bad things to happen to people and this would be their punishment for not listening to him. But what we know today is that God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to show his love and his mercy to the world. That he is a merciful God and he wants to be your God and he wants to have a relationship with you. This is exactly what this text tells us. It also points out the fact that we don't like when people point out our sin. We don't like when people point out what we're doing wrong and when we, we say things that we shouldn't or we act in ways we shouldn't. We don't like that, right? But God says, that is exactly why I've sent my son. Because you won't do this, I made it right for you. And God sent his son to take your sin to show his love for you and his mercy for you. And he dies on a cross. And in that, he has made your relationship right and good again. And God loves you so much. More than you can ever imagine. And think about the things in your life. I mean, the people in your life and the things that you get to do and that you get to go outside and play and uh, just all of the things in your life, God has provided ways for that to happen. And so today we give thanks that God makes this promise to us that he loves us so much that he would send his son. And that is the best promise that we can ever get. Have a great day, you guys. As we learned in our lesson, God loves the whole world so much that he gave his son to us. So we are going to make a spinning earth craft today so that we can remember that it was the whole world that God loved. So here is an example of the craft we're going to make. So follow along with the instructions. You're going to color these four different angles of the earth and then cut them out, fold them in half, and then you're going to use your beads and string to um, put through the middle of it when you glue them together. So follow along with those instructions. And then when you're all done, go ahead and hang this in a place that a little breeze might hit it. Um, not so that it can get wet, but just hang it up somewhere so that it can spin, spin around. Our memory verse today is from John 3, 16. So go ahead and cut out that square read it to a family member, and then have a family member read it back to you. Then see if you can recite it without looking at the paper at all. Next, you can go ahead and tape it somewhere in your house that you will see it throughout the week and read it. It might be a fridge or a cupboard or maybe by a door. Um, and as you see it, you can read it or maybe it will remind you of what the verse was and you can just say it in your head. And last, we are going to read the Apostles' Creed. So I gave you this piece of paper in your packet as well. And so as a family, recite or read the Apostles' Creed together. This is something we're doing as a church for Lent. And so it'd be good to go through it. Um, and feel free to ask any questions you have about the Apostles' Creed to your parents. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, as we finish up, go ahead and turn to each other and make the sign of the cross on their forehead and say, you are a child of God. See you next week.